Honorable Speaker, sir, data embassy for countries looking for digital continuity solutions, we will faci facilitate setting up of their data embassies in gift IFSC. Improving governance and investor protection in banking sector. To improve bank governance and enhance investors' protection, certain amendments to the Banking Regulation Act, the Bank Banking Companies Act, and the Reserve Bank of India Act are being proposed. Capacity building in securities market. Honorable Sp Speaker, sir, to build capacity of functionaries and professionals in the securities market, SEBI will be empowered to develop, regulate, maintain, and enforce norms and standards for education in the National Institute of Securities Markets and to recognize award of degrees, diplomas, and certificates. A central data processing, a central processing center a central processing center will be set up for faster response to companies through centralized handling of various forms filed with field officers under the Companies Act. <coughs> Reclaiming of shares and dividends. For investors to reclaim unclaimed shares and unpaid dividends from the Investor Education and Protection Fund Authority with ease, from the Investor Education and Protection Fund Authority with ease, an integrated IT portal will be established. Digital payments continue to find wide acceptance. In 2022, they show an increase of 76% in transaction and 91% in value. Fiscal support for this digital public infrastructure will continue in 2023-2024. Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav, Mahila Samman Bachat Patra. For commemorating Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav, a one-time new small savings scheme, Mahila Samman Savings Patra or Savings Certificate, Mahila Samman Savings Certificate will be made available for a two-year period up to March 2025. This will offer deposit facility up to 2 lakh in the name of a woman or girls for a tenor of two years at fixed interest rate of 7.5% with partial withdrawal option. Senior citizens. The maximum deposit limit for senior citizen saving scheme will be enhanced from 15 lakh to 30 lakhs of rupees. The maximum deposit limit for monthly income account scheme will be enhanced from 4.5 lakh to 9 lakh for single account and from 9 lakh to 15 lakh for joint account. Honorable Speaker, sir, fiscal management. 50 years interest-free loan to states. The entire 50-year loan to states has to be spent on capital expenditure within 2023-24. Most of this will be at the discretion of the states, but a part will be conditional on states increasing their actual capital expenditure. Parts of the outlay will also be linked to or allocated for the following purposes. Scrapping old garment vehicles, urban planning reforms and actions, financing reforms in urban local bodies to make them credit worthy for municipal bonds, housing for police personnel above or as part of the police station, constructing unity malls, children and adolescent libraries and digital infrastructure and state share of capital expenditure of central schemes. 
Honorable Speaker, sir, fiscal deficit of states. States will be allowed a fiscal deficit of 3.5% of GSDP, of which 0.5% will be tied to power sector reforms. Revised estimates 2022 to 2023. The revised estimate, Honorable Speaker, sir, of the total receipts, other than borrowing, is 24.3 lakh crores, of which the net, net tax receipts are 20.9 lakh crores. The revised estimate of the total expenditure is 41.9 lakh crores of rupees, of which the capital expenditure is about 7.3 lakh crores. The revised estimate of the fiscal deficit is 6.4% of GDP adhering to the budget estimate. So budget estimates of 2023-24. Coming to 2023-24, the total receipts other than borrowings and the total expenditure are estimated at 27.2 lakh crores and 45 uh, lakh crores respectively. The net tax receipts are estimated at 23.3 lakh crores. The fiscal deficit is estimated to be 5.9% of the GDP. In my budget speech for 21-22, I had announced that we plan to continue the path of fiscal consolidation, reaching a fiscal deficit of below 4.5% by 2025-26 with a fairly steady decline over the period. We have adhered to this path and I reiterate my intention to bring the fiscal deficit below 4.5% of GDP by 2025-26. To finance the fiscal deficit in 2023-24, the net market borrowings from dated securities are estimated at 11.8 lakh crores. The balance financing is expected to come from small savings and other sources. The gross market borrowings are estimated at 15.43 lakh crores of rupees. Honorable Speaker, sir, I now move to part B. Indirect taxes. My indirect tax proposals will aim to promote exports, boost domestic manufacturing, enhance domestic value addition, encourage green energy and mobility. A simplified tax structure with fewer tax rates helps in reducing compliance burden and improving tax administration. I propose to reduce the number of basic customs duty rates on goods other than textiles and agriculture from 21 to 13. As a result, there are minor changes in the basic custom duties, <coughs> cesses and surcharges on some items including toys, bicycle, automobiles and naphtha. Green mobility. To avoid cascading of taxes on blended compressed natural gas, I propose to exempt excise duty on GST paid compressed biogas contained in it. To further provide impetus to green mobility, customs duty exemptions is being extended to import of capital goods and machinery required for manufacture of lithium ion cells for batteries used in electrical vehicles as well. Electronics, as a result of various initiatives of the government, including faced manufacturing program, Mobile phone production in India has increased from 5.8 crore units valid, uh, valued at about 18,900 crore in 2014-15 to 31 crore units valued at 2,75,000 crore in the last financial year. To further deepen domestic value addition in manufacturing of mobile phones, I propose to provide relief to customer, customs duty I propose to provide relief in customs duty on import of certain parts and inputs like camera lens and continue the concessional duty on lithium-ion cells 
for batteries for another year. Similarly, to promote value addition in manufacture of televisions, I propose to reduce the basic customs duty on parts of open cells of TV panels to 2.5 percent. Electrical, to rectify inversion of duty, to rectify inversion of duty structure and encourage manufacturing of electric kitchen chimneys, the basic custom duty on electric kitchen chimney is being increased from 7.5 percent to 15 percent and that on heat coils for these is proposed to be reduced from 20 percent to 15 percent. Chemicals and petrochemicals, denatured ethyl alcohol is used in chemical industry. I propose to exempt basic customs duty on it. This will also support the ethanol blending program and facilitate an endeavor for energy transition. Basic customs duty is also being reduced on acid grade fluoro spar from 5 percent to 2.5 percent to make the domestic fluorochemicals industry competitive. Further, the basic customs duty on crude glycerin for use in manufacture of epichlorohydrin is proposed to be reduced from 7.5 percent to 2.5 percent. Marine products. In the last financial year, marine products recorded the highest export growth benefiting farmers in the coastal states of the country. To further enhance the export competitiveness of marine products, particularly shrimps, due, duty is being reduced on key inputs for domestic manufacture of shrimp feed. India is a global leader, as I said in part A, in cutting and polishing of natural diamonds, contributing about three-fourths of the global turnover by value. With the depletion of deposits of natural diamonds, the industry is moving towards lab-grown diamonds and it holds huge promise. To seize this opportunity, I propose to reduce the basic customs duty on seeds used in their manufacture. Customs duties on door or dore and bars of gold and platinum were increased earlier this fiscal. I propose to increase the duties of, on articles made therefrom to enhance the duty differential. I also propose to increase the import duty on silver doors, bars and articles to align them with that on gold and platinum. To facilitate availability of raw materials for the steel sector, exemptions from basic custom duty on raw materials for manufacture of CRGO steel, ferrous scrap and nickel cathode is being continued. Similarly, the concessional BCD of 2.5 percent on copper scrap is also being continued to ensure the availability of raw materials for secondary copper producers who are mainly in the MSME sectors. Compounded rubber, the basic custom duty rate on compounded rubber is being increased from 10 percent to 25 percent or 30 kg, whichever is lower, at par with that of natural rubber other than latex to curb circumvention of duty. Cigarettes, national calamity contingent duty on specified cigarettes was last revised three years ago. This is proposed to be revised upwards by about 16 percent. Direct taxes. I now come to my direct tax proposals. Honorable Speaker, these proposals aim to maintain continuity and stability of taxation further simplify and rationalize various provisions to reduce the compliance burden, promote the entrepreneurial spirit and provide tax relief to citizens. It has been constant endeavor of the income tax department to improve taxpayer services by making compliance easy and smooth. Our taxpayers portal received a maximum of 72 lakh returns in a day processed more than 6.5 crore returns this year. Average processing period reduced from 93 days in financial year 13-14 to 16 days only now. And 45 percent 
of the returns were processed within 24 hours. We intend to further improve this, roll out the next generation common IT return form for taxpayer convenience and also plan to strengthen the grievance redressal mechanism. MSMEs and professionals. MSMEs are growth engines of our economy. Micro enterprises with turnover up to 2 crore of rupees and certain professionals with turnover of up to 50 lakh rupees can avail the benefit of presumptive taxation. I propose to provide enhanced limits of 3 crore and 75 lakh respectively to the taxpayers whose cash receipts are no more than 5%. Whose cash receipts are no more than 5%. Moreover, to support MSMEs in timely receipt of payments, I propose to allow deduction for expenditure incurred on payments made to them only when payment is actually made. Cooperation. Cooperation is a value to be cherished. In realizing our Prime Minister's goal for Sekar Se Samridhi and his resolve to connect the spirit of cooperation with the spirit of Amrit Kal, in addition to the measures proposed in Party, I have a slew of proposals for the cooperation sector. First, new cooperatives that commence manufacturing activities till 2024, 31st March, shall get the benefit of a lower tax rate of 15 percent as is presently available to new manufacturing companies. Secondly, I propose to provide an opportunity to sugar cooperatives to claim payments made to uh, sugarcane farmers for the period prior to the ass assessment year 2016-17 as expenditure. This is expected to provide them a relief of almost 10,000 crores. Thirdly, I am providing a higher limit of 2 lakh per member for cash deposits to loans in cash by primary agricultural cooperative societies and primary, agricultural, primary cooperative agriculture and rural development banks. I repeat that. Thirdly, I am providing a higher limit of 2 lakh per member for cash deposits to and loans in cash by primary agricultural cooperative societies and primary cooperative agricultural and rural development banks. Similarly, a higher limit of 3 crore for TDS on cash withdrawal is being provided to cooperative societies. Startups. Entrepreneurship is vital for a country's economic development. We have taken a number of measures for startups and they have borne results. India is now the third largest ec ecosystem for startups globally and ra ranks second in innovation quality among middle income countries. I propose to extend the date of incorporation for income tax benefits to startups from 31 3 2023 to 31 3 2024. I further propose to provide the benefit of carry forward of losses on, on change of shareholding of startups from seven years of incorporation to 10 years. To reduce the pendency of appeals at commissioner level, I propose to deploy about 100 joint commissioners for disposal of small appeals. We shall also be more selective in taking up cases for scrutiny of returns already received this year. Better targeting of tax concessions. For better targeting of tax concessions and exemptions, I propose to cap deduction from capital gains on investment in residential house under section 54 and section 54F to 10 crores. Another proposal with similar intent is to limit income tax exemption from proceeds of insurance policies with very high value. Rationalization. Honorable Speaker, sir, 
there are a number of proposals relating to rationalization and simplification. Income of authorities, boards and commissions set up by statutes of union or state for the purpose of housing, development of cities, towns and villages and regulating or reg regulating and developing an activity or matter is proposed to be exempted from income tax. Other me major, major measures in this direction are removing the minimum threshold of 10,000 for TDS and clarifying taxability relating to online gaming, not treating conversion of gold into electronic gold receipts and vice versa as capital gains, reducing the TDS rate from 30% to 20% on taxable portion of EPF withdrawals in non-PAN cases and taxation on income for market-linked debentures. Other major proposals in the finance bill relate to the following. Extension of period of tax benefits to funds relocating to IFSC, give city till 31-3-2025. Decriminalization under Section 276A of the Income Tax Act, allowing carry forward of losses on strategic disinvestment, including that of IDBI Bank, and providing EEE -E -E status to Adnivir Fund. Personal income tax. Now I come to what everyone is waiting for. <laughs> Personal income tax. I have five major announcements to make in this regard. These primarily benefit our hard working middle class. The first one concern, concerns rebate. Currently, those with income up to 5 lakh do not pay any tax, do not pay any income tax in both old and new regimes. I propose to increase the rebate limit to 7 lakhs in the... I propose to increase the rebate limit to 7 lakh in the new tax regime. Thus, persons in the new tax regime with income up to 7 lakhs will not have to pay any tax at all. The second proposal relates to middle class individuals. I had introduced in the year 2020 the new personal income tax regime with six income slabs starting from 2.5 lakh. I propose to change the tax structure in this regime by reducing the number of slabs to five and increasing the tax exemption limit to three lakhs. The new tax rates are zero to three lakh, nil. Three to six lakhs, 5%. Six to nine lakhs, 10%. 9 to 12 lakh, 15 percent, 12 to 15 lakhs, 20 percent, and above 15 lakhs, 30 percent. This will provide major relief to all taxpayers in the new regime. An individual, an individual with an annual income of 9 lakhs will be required to pay only 45,000 rupees. This is only 5 percent of his or her income. It is a reduction of 25% on what he or she is required to pay now. That is 60,000. So in the place of 60,000, it is now only 45,000. Similarly, an individual with an income of 15 lakh rupees would be required to pay only 1.5 lakh or 10% of his income or her income, a reduction of 20% from the existing liability of 1,87,500 rupees. 
My third proposal is for the salaried class and the pensioners, including family pensioners, for whom I propose to extend the benefit of standard deduction to the new tax regime. Each salaried person with an income of 15.5 lakh rupees or more will thus stand to benefit by 52,500 rupees. My fourth announcement in personal income tax is regarding the highest tax rate which in our country is 42.74%. This is among the highest in the world. I propose to reduce the highest surcharge. I propose to reduce the highest surcharge rate from 37% to 25% in the new tax regime. This would result this would result in reduction of the maximum rate this would result in the reduction of the maximum tax rate to 39%. Lastly, the limit of 3 lakh rupees for tax exemption on leave and cashment on retirement of non-government salaried employees was last fixed in the year 2002 when the highest basic pay in the government was only 30,000 rupees per month. In line with the increase in the government salaries, I am proposing to increase this limit to 25 lakh rupees. We are also making, we are also making the new income tax regime as the default tax regime. However, citizens will continue to have the option to avail the benefit of the old tax regime. Apart from these, I am also making some other changes as given in the annexure. As a result of these proposals, revenue of about 38,000 crore to 37,000 crore in direct taxes and rupees 1,000 crore in indirect taxes will be foregone while revenue of about 3,000 crore will be additionally mobilized. Thus, the total revenue foregone is about 35,000 crores annually. Honorable Speaker, sir, with these words, I commend the budget to this August House. Item number one, Manye. Item number two, Srimati Nirmala Sitharamanji. Sir, with your permission, I lay on the table of the following statements. Under section 3.1 of the Fiscal Responsibility Budget Manage Ma Management Act 2003, one medium term fiscal policy come fiscal policy strategy statement and macroeconomic framework statement manya sadashgan jaisa ki aapko samachar bhag 2 ke madhyam se pehle hi suchit kiya ja chuka hai ki mananiya vitt mantri ji ke budget bhashan ki pratiyan hard copy ke roop mein uplabdh karai gayi hai aap budget bhashan ki apni apni prati prakashan palak se le le aapko ye bhi suchit kiya jata hai ki manya mantri dwara बजट प्रस्तुत किए जाने के पश्चात उसकी प्रतियां आपको मेंबर्स पोर्टल के माध्यम से उपलब्ध करा दी जाएगी आइटम नंबर 3 माननीय मंत्री जी वित्त मंत्री जी सर विद योर परमिशन आई राइज टू मूव फॉर लीव टू इंट्रोड्यूस द फाइनेंस बिल 2023 प्रश्न यह कि विधेयक को प्रस्तावित करने की अनुमति प्रदान की जाए जो सदस्य इसके पक्ष में हां कहे जो सदस्य विरोध में ना कहे मेरे विचार में निर्णय हां वालों के पक्ष में हां वालों के पक्ष में माननीय मंत्री जी विधेयक को प्रस्तावित करें सर आई इंट्रोड्यूस द बिल सभा की कार्यवाही कल गुरुवार दिनांक 2 फरवरी 2023 को प्राप्त 11 बजे तक के लिए स्थगित की जाती है
ಇದು ಏಷ್ಯಾನೆಟ್ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ನೆಟ್ವರ್ಕ್ ಪ್ರಸ್ತುತಿ ನೀವು ನೋಡ್ತಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಏಷ್ಯಾನೆಟ್ ಸುವರ್ಣ ನ್ಯೂಸ್